Hello there. Thanks for watching to VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell yet again, episode 151. You might even be listening on iTunes or Spotify on your way to work, on your way to somewhere. You know me, Steve. You know John Evans. Hey, special guest this week. Uh, what's the best way to describe him? So over the last few years, one of the most uh, recognisable voices in boxing. Uh, I had the pleasure of listening to him um, compare the um, British Boxing Awards yesterday. Um, and he did a good job. I'm not saying that because he was here, but he did. He did. He, you know, it was, everything was good about yesterday at the, the British Boxing Border Control Awards at the Brewery, Chiswell Street, London. It's Andy Clark. Andy, thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, top job yesterday. And uh, did you enjoy it? And did you agree with all the awards that you had to give out? Did you think anyone was unlucky? Not really. I, th I think no. there was a few categories where you couldn't have argued if anyone had won it, really. Yeah. But um, I thought everybody who did win was was definitely a worthy winner. Yeah. It was good to see them give out the Sportsmanship Award because they don't always do it. Um, they'll just do it whenever they feel like something really stands out. And it was good to see Sam Gilly and Louis Green up there getting that, the pair of them. And hopefully they'll fight again soon because they've been paired together by the board. So I, I don't see any reason why that won't happen. And I just really enjoyed that that fight being around yeah. it. And I just, I like those two because they are exactly what they look like they are they're, they're they're completely authentic you know they are a bit of a throwback um so yeah i was a fan of that but i, yeah. I thought everybody you know yeah, could see it. could see lee wood get boxer of the year wasn't it because... i was absolutely delighted about that um we're gonna speak about him late it was prompting me to speak out in this week but the only thing i thought he should have got fight of the year warrington wood but the fight of the year was so difficult any of them could have were worthy winners even jack martin and cj yeah. challenger um, you know, but yeah, uh, that was the only one where I thought Warrington would, but it's so subjective. It's not to say Yard and Bird, but Baterbiev didn't deserve it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, it was really enjoyable. I think the Sunday, Sunday kind of lunchtime thing works pretty well, doesn't it? Because yeah. it gives everybody time to get there, even if you're coming from out of town. And, you know, if you want to, <laughs> if you were keen to really get stuck in you know you, you can <laughs> there still. were some serious um, people getting stuck in when i left there about <laughs> i left about five o'clock i left about not long after you and there was some serious serious drinking going to continue in the pub there were people there who i was with and they had bottles of gray goose piled up uh i thought this is time for me to escape yeah, now you know yeah yeah exactly when when you see that you know that that's the point of no return isn't it either yeah. Either you're in or you're out, and if you're out, you've got to you just got to get on your toes and be away. Yeah. Well, Andy, something while you're on these Saudi shows, you know, we all sit at home watching them. You're out there. One of the things I really enjoy, I've messaged you about it, is the the arrivals, and the when you stood there for four hours just interviewing everybody, and you've managed to make them good fun. You know, they're not you don't take it too serious because at the end of the day, it's a red carpet event for a boxing show, which is ridiculous to me anyway. But what what's your What's been your plan going into them to make them a little bit different and a little bit more watchable? Well, a lot of that's down to the lads we work with. So um, Brain Cut Media do those. Um, Ian Chambers and, and Jake Meskell. Jake, I worked with at Sky for a long time. And his attitude to them is exactly the same as mine, which is exactly what you just said, which is that, you know, you, you've you got to have some fun with it. It needs to be a bit rough around the edges. If people walk across shot, it doesn't really matter. You know, get anybody in. You can see who you think might be good fun. At times, you can't really hear each other properly, but you don't want to get uptight about things like that. You know, boxing's, well, as we all know, it's it's like it's potentially, it's, it's it's a heavy business at times. And, and sometimes it can be very, very serious. It's too serious to take it too seriously all the time. And during fight week, I think, is when you can... You, yeah, you can. You can have a bit of fun with it. And it was great, you know, um, swapping in Matt Clean and Johnny and John Fury was on good form. And you've got to try and mix it up because essentially you are doing pretty much the same thing three days in a row with yeah. the grand arrivals and then the workouts and then the and then the press conference. And we always kind of think with the grand arrivals, everybody comes on. But then the next day when you get to the workouts, if people aren't keen, there's no point really. They're not going like, to, yeah. Nah, this is what, what what for, you know? Like, Joshua gets a lot of attention, obviously, the last couple of fight weeks because he's generally tended to get... Um, not difficult's not the right word, really, but 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 less talkative as as, as the days go by. And so he does all these sit-downs on the Monday um, and he was on, you know, good form. Um, 
fine at the workout and then uh, at the arrivals. And then you get to the workout and you just think, but don't really need to get him exactly. up here again yeah. unless he really wants to, um, because it's better. You, you, you want people who, 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 are, who are keen to chat, basically. Um, yeah. And I completely understand if somebody doesn't want to essentially talk about the same thing for the third day in a row. Yeah. Macklin's made for that, isn't he? Oh, mate, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves an analogy, Macklin. You know, he can go down any 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 rabbit hole at the, at the drop of a hat. Um, yeah, he is, he is. But uh, yeah, th- th- I mean, if you don't do it like that, then you, you at times you can feel the the will to live just kind of leaving you because you're thinking to yourself, God, this isn't very interesting. And if I'm not finding it interesting, it must be a pretty brutal watch. So as soon as you find yourself thinking along those lines, you've got problems. Um, so yeah, you need to you need to do whatever you can just to keep it just to keep it moving, really keep it fun. Brilliant, Andy. So let's try and keep this. Let's make this a a, a nice watch and not brutal a brutal viewing <laughs> listening this evening. Uh, we'll try and stick to three minutes around. Uh, John's going to kick us off on a on a boxer. I think you'll be commentating on this weekend, Andy. Far away for three minutes, John. Yeah, this Dalton Smith fight against Jose Zapeda this weekend, I, I, I'm I, looking forward to this one. For some reason, people seem to be just completely overlooking Jose Zapeda. You know, Dalton Smith's going to win. Dalton Smith's going to go on to world class. Let's get this Adam Azim fight made. I, I was just looking before. Look, Listen to Dalton Smith's last four opponents. Sam Mazon. Leon Smith knocked him out. Leon Taylor knocked him out two weeks ago. Casey Benjamin, decision. Billy Allington, decision. Sam Maxwell at the end of his career, stoppage. Now he's fighting Jose Zapeda. This isn't a gimme. This is a harder fight than Adam Azim. Jose Zapeda is a higher level than Adam Azim. He's got knockout power. Dalton Smith cuts. Zapeda's in last chance saloon. And But it just seems to have been accepted that Dalton Smith's going to roll over him. If Dalton Smith beats Zapeda, it's a career best performance. I think he will, because I think Dalton Smith's really talented. But I think people are, are, are wildly underestimating Zapeda. Maybe he's got nothing left, I don't know. But on paper, that's an enormous step up from Billy Allington and Sam Maxwell to Jose Zapeda. It, you can argue that, you know, the, the two, is it Re- Richardson, Hitchin and Re- Re- Regis Progray, who have beaten... Uh, who have beaten um, Zapeda the last three, inside his last three fights, are a... Uh, step up from Dalton Smith, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you all the way. I think this is um, th- this is a massive step up. Uh, you know, you, you would maybe think that next they would have gone for someone like Enoch Paulson or or Pettijon or or Anthony Yigit, but 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 Zapida, like, he's only lost to Flanagan and that was that was unlucky. Um, Jose Ramirez, Progre, and he was competitive in that fight, took it into the yeah. 11th, and then Richardson Hitchens. So if he wins Dalton Smith, then he he leapfrogs Azim and leaves him in his rearview mirror for now. So yeah. that fight would that fight would never happen because they would just say, well, why would I drop back down there to fight you? Because if he beats Zapida, then he's he, he's at fringe world level in a really strong division. I, I think he'll win too, but it's it, he's going to have to be right on his game or he'll get beaten. You know, yeah. in, in America, I'm sure they look at this fight and think, hang on a second. What kind of insanity is this? Dalton Smith hasn't boxed anyone. They'll look on his record and they just think that this is absolute chaos that they've chosen to take this fight. It's a bold, I mean, I like it, but it is a really bold step. Yeah, I, I love it. We don't see enough of it. No, so, we don't. Uh, good, ga- great gamble. And if it comes off, it's it's a, one of the best bits of matchmaking for a good few years. And I think it will come off. But like you said, Andy, he's got to be switched on for every second of the fight. Zapeda's got that power where he can switch you off instantly. And I do worry because he punches very slashy in like a slashing manner. And Dalton's got problems with his eyes and cutting, hasn't he? So that's another another red flag. But yeah, I can't wait for it and a real good matchup. Are you there? Are you there for talk sports Saturday night, Andy? No, no, I'm not. Um, but I'll be watching definitely. It's um yeah, it's he's got that kind of sort of like shallow arcing yeah. left hand, doesn't he? Southpaw left hand that he just gets yeah. that little angle on it up over the top, and Touchdown. it's. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some hairy moments. It may might even be one of those fights where he, you know, has to get off the floor. Um, and and even were he to lose, you know, it wouldn't. It would no. be. It's not what they want, but it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be 
depending on the performance, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be terminal yeah, by, by any stretch. Yeah. Right. Okay. Round two, um I come up with this topic when you was interviewing Lee Wood yesterday, Andy at the at the awards. And it's where does Lee go from here? Because when you were speaking to me, I don't say he didn't know where he was going. It was sort of, well, there should be something soon. But you wonder where it is going. The city ground fight's gone up in smoke um, against Josh Warrington. I'm hearing that he could have had that fight at Headingley, but he doesn't He doesn't want to go there. Fair enough. You know, he's, he's got that dream of that city ground fight, and he's entitled to that now. Um, I'm just wondering where he goes from here. I can only... I can just see him taking, okay, should we call, I don't like to use this this sort of word, cash out fight. Will he take that fight where and go maybe for Emmanuel Navarati for the WBO super featherweight somewhere on America's West Coast where he'll be an underdog and if, if he wins, amazing or oh, great. And if he loses, at least he's going out with a fortune in his back pocket. I'm just wondering where he goes from now from the situation he's in. So I think he knows he's on the, he's on the, you know, he's on the last platform as such in his boxing career. He's looking at towards the end himself anyway. Yeah, I, it, it is difficult, isn't it? Because I, I just sort of assumed that that fight with Warrington at, at Forest would happen. And I know it's complicated with football grounds for, for, numerous different reasons and we feel like they should just play ball and make it easy but that that's not their prerogative um I'm not saying Forrest have been difficult about it I, I just don't know but if he doesn't fight Warrington then you feel like that's probably what he'll do or a Shaki Foster whoever would basically get him the biggest purse it probably would be Navarrete you know go and fight him on a on the top rank show but um it would kind of feel like a bit of a shame wouldn't it if if he can't get that rematch with Warrington because with all the things they've said to each other since then I think it has it's built it up hasn't it and I think we all want to see it I, I mean I definitely want to see it so it, it'd be it'd be a shame if they can't get it done yeah it's the one thing Lee has got at the minute after the year he had he's got a little bit of time hasn't he because he had some hard fights last year so it might not might not be the end of the world but he's had a few months off and a little bit of frustration waiting to get something nailed down. And he's also not got many left, as he, like Steve said, you know, it's the big fight would have been the one after Josh if he came through that. You know, he, he's got like a two fight window here, hasn't he? And um, we were hoping he would have hoped it would have been city ground cash out fight or big, big final fight. He might just have to switch them around. Could we still make the Josh fight after a fight with a Navarrete? Do you think it'd still hold its appeal? Well, it depends what Josh does. If you know, you know, they're at a situation where they must probably accept the next loss is the last loss. What happens if Josh uses in the in the interim? But I totally understand why why, why he won't, doesn't want to go to Leeds for that fight. I mean, he wanted to go to the city ground, but as you say, these football grounds have, have these dates. And I was speaking to Nathan Heaney yesterday, um, and there's one date at Stoke that can't go back two weeks, three weeks, or anything. It's either on a particular date in June. Or it's not going to happen there. But uh, obviously, I'm guessing these football grounds are having pitches torn up and new pipe work put in. I don't know. But he, he's got one week he can go to that stadium. And if he doesn't, he won't be going there. Right. Plus, Elton John goes around every football stadium in the summer, doesn't it? So you got you got to work it around that. He seems to, anyway. Did you, did you, did you enjoy watching him at Old Trafford, did you, last year, John? I think, oh, I like, I like a bit of Elton. I like a bit of Elton. The early stuff was very good in the 70s yeah. when he was a bit of a rascal, but then he got a bit, you know, then he got a bit, you know, middle of the a road. Bit lion, he got a bit Lion Kingy for you. Yeah, a bit, bit too <laughs> pantomimey, but his early stuff was brilliant, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> we're not we're not well, a music we podcast, much as I'd love to do a music podcast. Um, <laughs> round three, something we touched on the other week, Saving Private Ryan, over to you, Andy. <laughs> Somebody's got to pull Ryan Garcia out of this fight against Devin Haney. It's getting really desperate now, I think, the, the urgency around it, because unless this is the most elaborate piece of subterfuge the world has ever seen, and he's just trying to lull Devin Haney and everybody else into a false sense of security, and I don't think that is it, it's pretty clear, I think, to anyone that Garcia is not mentally where he needs to be to be preparing properly to fight someone like Haney. And if you're in Team Garcia, you have got to bite the bullet if you care about him and pull him out of this fight. Because I know there's a lot of money to be made and it's complicated pulling out the big fights and 
People will be worried that if he pulls out of this, then maybe he won't get another one. And maybe they feel like it's all starting to go wrong and this could be the last big one anyway. And they'll be leaving a load of money on the table and all that kind of stuff. But somebody has just got to show some real fortitude here and just say, no, this cannot happen. I cannot preside over this and let this happen. The money doesn't matter. This kid cannot fight Devin Haney in, in the in the condition that he's that he's in because he's just he's all over the place, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I said this the other week, so not as eloquently as you, but very similar to you. And uh, I'm just disappointed that people like um, promoters aren't doing anything. You know, the people involved in making this fight aren't doing anything. They don't come out of it well at all because they're the ones that can take action in a click of a finger and do this. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just, um, it almost reminds you of like, you know, when they, you know, everyone knew in the last couple of weeks before he fought Lennox Lewis, so Oliver McCall was going to the wall and he was sort of like dragged in there that week. You could see all that fight week in Las Vegas. Um, around this time, forget what year it was. Um, and you could just see he wasn't right away. He was walking around all week and it was just almost like that. And the the end of the, ty the Tyson career where people were just putting him in to get the last piece of the car meat off the carcass. And it's it's got shades of that, although obviously Garcia is young enough to, to, you know, to overcome what his issues are and, and fight back again. They were at different stages of their careers. But yeah, it's just a tragedy. John. Yeah, he, well, I know Andy said it, maybe it's a bit of a uh, promo, but if you saw that video of him doing the slow motion shadow boxing yesterday, Derek James certainly didn't. But the look on his face was disgusted. He wasn't any part of it whatsoever. Yeah, it's um, if if he does go through the fight, all the signs of it will get humiliated, taken apart, and the last thing we all want to see is him go to pieces in the ring. You know that's going to hurt everyone going forward, isn't it? So. Cut your losses in the short term, send Ryan away, hope he can pull himself together again and, and look to make it in the future. But there's nothing, at this stage, there's nothing to be gained by going through with it apart from a few million quid on a pay-per-view. That's, and, that's and nothing, also, is it? Also, John, if it, if it does go wrong in the ring and he breaks down the ring and he's humiliated and, become, you know, because in this world we're in, you're humiliated in something, you're not given, you're given sympathy, but you're also ridiculed mercilessly. Yeah, if that happens been. to him, you, you imagine how bad it could become for if he sees himself being ridiculed, what sort yeah. of effect that has on him as well. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, because I mean, he's already been down that road once, hasn't he, against Javante yeah. Davis, where we saw how that fight ended. And, you know, I understood why he did what he did, which was effectively to sit it out. But that is what he did. Yeah. Um, and, and he bore the brunt of that. And if... I just can't see any other outcome than if, if he gets in the ring with, with Devin Haney at best... He just gets an absolute hiding and gets taken out early. At the minute, that's the best thing that could happen. That is that is the best case scenario that I can imagine, see. Imagine the worst. The worst case is a twelve round torture. Beating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as bad as it gets. Yeah. Well, round four over to you, John. It's not going well for um, Ryan Garcia. It's going well for William Zapida, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, poor Maxi Hughes. God, that was. That was as hard as and bad as it gets, that wasn't it? Oh, you know, uh, I know Maxi stuck in there, but oh, um, what a handful William Zapeda is. I want to see him with anybody, any of these guys. I think they'll all avoid him like the plague because I don't think any of them want any part of that. But can you imagine Shakur having to work out a way to box against that coming at you? Or can you imagine Tank Davis having to pick his punches amid that kind of infighting where it's just a punch a second? Every angle. I, I want to see Zapeda in with them all. Uh, maybe he won't beat these guys. Maybe he'll get found out to be a bit too crude and not know enough. But you know, maybe he might just have to settle for being the crowd favourite of this area of lightweights. But he's going to be in some exciting fights. I, well, I, I love watching him and what a performance at weekend. Yeah, one nasty southpaw, isn't he? Um, oh. When you when you think what how Maxi performed against Cambosas compared to that, it reminded me, and I and I, and I, I think the world of Maxi used a lovely person. Love seeing him around the circuit. He's always at the small wall shows, always there to chat to people. John knows him well, and, I, and I'm sure you do, Andy. But um, it reminded me when Brits used to go abroad in the 70s to America and get taken out. It reminded me of that sort of night and. 
you know, people look, remember, I just hope people don't remember Maxi for that because he come up against one vicious man the other night. The bo- that body shots, they, they were sinking in. You could almost, you know, when you there was, were right to the body in one round and you almost felt as if he just creased the stomach. Incredible. Have you, have you, what did you think? Well, what do you think of William Zapida, Andy? I mean, it was... It was it was brutal, wasn't it? Watching it the other night, and it's one of those performances where, at the end of it, if you're in the Maxi Hughes business, there's really not that much to say about it. You know, he was just in with somebody who, after the first round, where he did did sort of all right actually, he just he just took him apart, and there wasn't really anything he could do about it. And true to form, he didn't try and offer up any excuses. Obviously, preparations weren't ideal, but in in a sense that would have been a lot harder to take if he'd gone down by another questionable decision or it had been a tight fight. And then he'd looked at the preparation and thought, you know, maybe that was what cost me, but, but, but that didn't, but that, that wasn't why what happened on Saturday was what happened. Like John, I'm, I'm keen to see him in with anyone really. I think Shakur sounds like he could be up for it. Yeah. He's, he's made some comments and, and, and if they could get that fight done, then that would be, that'd be great because, they're starting to fight each other around these weights, lightweight, super lightweight. Obviously, a lot of the ones who were at lightweight have now moved up to super lightweight. But it's um, someone like Zapida, he's always going to be a good watch, isn't he? It's just as simple as that. I, I can't see how he wouldn't be. And can you imagine if Shakur does manage to outbox Zapida? Imagine if he can work out a way to deal with that, then we're talking about one. And I, I think Shakur's already one of the greatest of this generation. But can you imagine if Shakur could tame that? You know, what a feather yeah. is fantastic. That's the ultimate style versus style fight. That it doesn't yeah, get yeah. Any more extreme, does it, than Shakur against Zabeda? Brilliant. Yeah. Round five. Um, Joe Joyce or no show, Joe, should we say the other night? I just worry for Joe Joyce now of that performance the other night. You know, it's but you know, I just. Worry about what what it you know what all where he might where it might end up as you know like the just the way he is right. I just think and I hate to sell fighters they got to retire, but someone I really think needs to sit down with Joe now. I've always said and I'm wrong on plenty that you know with Joe's defence is always like the oak tree. You chop it it long enough, it's going to come down. And I was reading some quotes from Joe today in a paper where he was saying he's got to work on his defence and. It's just too late to, to to work on that. And, you know, what we got to remember with Joe, and instead of, you know, think, you know, people are going to start remembering for these latest, these last couple of performances. And what have we got to remember is what a brilliant amateur he was as well. He's always done his fight at the absolute highest level for years. He might have only been a pro. I've got, it isn't a long pro career, but you think that the level he's been fighting at since that over the last 12, 13 years as an amateur, and I, I just think it's time for him to retire because the Joe Joyce, who you know, who even b- before Joe up to Joe, the Joe Parker fight, would have just got Cash Alley out there within moments, and that the other night to see him labour was it, it, it was I just didn't enjoy it at all. Um, and I'm I'm you know I love Joe, just hate seeing where he is in his career now. I don't know if you fellas have shared that opinion. You think he should box on? I think he will. I don't necessarily think he should. I think those two defeats against Zhang, there's just no way that they're not going to take something away from you mentally and physically because by the time we got to that first Zhang fight off the back of the Parker win, which obviously has aged really, really well. Parker's different now, but it's still a brilliant fight and a really good win. By that stage, he had he had fully bought into, as we all had, I think, I definitely had this idea that Maybe he was that guy who who couldn't really be hurt. You know, I remember him giving us a a great line in the build up to the first Yang fight. Everybody's got a plan until they punch me in the face and nothing happens. <laughs> and that it was great, but that came back to haunt him because Yang punched him in the face a lot in that first fight, and something did happen. His eye blew up, and and he got stopped, and then he got knocked out. And the knockout, it's 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 just such an interesting thing on on so many levels. But the really really tough ones are ones that happen to people who never imagined that it could happen. And they're, they're almost impossible to get over, I think, from from kind of having looked into it. And he would never have imagined, Joyce, that he could get, that he could have done to him what Zhang did to him in that second fight. They all admit, or they've all, they're all realistic, the ones who get to a good level. They all accept, yeah, of course I could lose. This is elite level sport. 
on the night. I'm absolutely convinced it won't happen, but of course I could lose. Only an idiot would think you, they can't lose, but it's how you lose, isn't it? And that was, I, I don't know, I, I just think you leave a big piece of yourself in the ring there. And I think the Dubois fight is there um, and I think they'll they'll do it. Um, and maybe if he, maybe that would be the one that, that if it doesn't go well, the, to convince him that that, that that should be it. Yeah. Just, I agree with both of you, but if it's two ways, it three ways retire. If you're on, if you're looking out for Joe, but you don't want him to retire, you take the biggest fight you can possibly get for the most amount of money. But if you're in the boxing business, you make the Dubois fight. So it's one of three things, isn't it? I think they're the only three options. I'd like if I had to put them in order, I'd like retire Dubois biggest fight because the biggest fight could be could be a, a bad ending for Joe. Yeah, I just want yeah. him to retire. I hope he's okay, money wise. I, I, I'm sure he. I hope he is. Think he is. Uh, I just want him to retire and enjoy retirement. He, he he's earned it and deserved it. What, what a career, amateur and pro. What a yeah. career. Final round, final word with you, Andy. Hometown heroes and one star at the weekend who John, I know John's a massive fan of. Yeah, so there were two on that card, but it was mainly Liam Davis that has kind of inspired it, but but Nathan Heaney too. I've always just been a massive fan of fighters who start small, start local, and just build from there. You know, they look to become the biggest noise in their hometown. You know, sell tickets to people who live on your street, then sell people tickets who live on the street next to you. Then see if you could sell out your local arena and build it all from there because you've got that fan base and maybe you haven't had a stellar amateur career. And that helps with kind of taking it step by step. And you look at Josh Warrington and Chris Billum Smith and, and now Liam Davis, they're just clicking through title by title by title, tight circle, trusts everybody around him, isn't looking to listen to loads of people. They just keep the faith and and do it how they're doing it. And and I'm just I'm just such a fan of it because I think that is the right way to do it. People will say it's old school, but good ideas don't go out of date. And yeah. this idea that everybody needs to go global now, mainly yeah. because of social media from the very beginning, is horseshit. I mean, it really is. You know, it's so overrated, social media, in terms of being an indicator of who's genuinely popular. P clicking follow is the most casual thing you can do. Handing over money for a ticket and physically going to something, it's a completely different ball game. And if you want people to do that, you've got to get out there and, and, and show people who you are and give them a reason to do it. If you genuinely do support your local football club and people see you at the ground, that helps. Davis hasn't really gone down that road, but some of the other lads have. Um, but, it, but it's authentic. It's real. Um, yeah, hometown. Yeah. Be, be a big noise in your hometown. That is the way to start. You know what I think is brilliant about this hometown thing? Just going away, going back. Now, I'm a generation or five ahead of you two in age and boxing. Now, everything in boxing was so London-centric in the 70s and 80s. Conte had to make his name. You had Jim Watt did OK in Glasgow when he went back there. But because of the there was BBC and Duff and national promotions, everything was London-centric. What Sky, um, was, you know, Sky have done so brilliantly they made boxing a provincial thing and made these superstars provincially with Hatton, you know, Scott Harrison in Glasgow at the Brayhead Arena. And I think that oh, the, the, Paul, Ingle, Paul, Ingle, Paul Ingle around the whole area, you know, Billum Smith with Sky going to Bournemouth, Josh Warrington in Leeds. And the, the, the modern day broadcasters have got to take a lot of credit for making these hometown heroes. Because before a TV network would, till Sky came along, a TV network would not leave London for boxing. You know, you had your, you know, your regional programs when Frank Warren come along in the 80s. And I think a lot of the credit for making these superstars goes to the modern day broadcasters as well. I know I went a bit off tangent from what you were no, saying no, it's there. No, no, not really. I mean, that's that's exactly it because Liam Davis is from Telford and, you know, Richie Woodall made a massive name for himself boxing exactly. out of Telford back in the day. And, and they've got this international centre. It's kind of, you do sort of wonder to yourself almost like, to why have they got one? But I mean, they have got one. Yeah. So he's got I mean, a big arena to box in right in his backyard. And I mean, that's just, it's, 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 it's perfect. I mean, what would Conte, okay, I'm going back years. So sorry to reminisce back to the seventies, but what would something like Conte against Bob Foster be now at Anfield? What would Conte be? You know, because oh. he, he, bo he boxed, he had the, the Liverpool, I think he had Liverpool stadium fights, but it's, it's just great that these, 
because of the, the broadcasters that that's really made these fighters because before these guys wouldn't be getting a look in. They'll be having to go down to London for all those fights. Yeah. John, <laughs> before we go, John, I've got to ask you, you must have what? been absolutely over the moon with Liam Davis the other yeah. night. I saw Lee McGregor yesterday and he was there the other night and he was saying he was just absolutely, you know, bearing in mind that it was the guy that beat him. He was absolutely just waxing lyrical about that performance. You know what I like about Liam? He gets these opportunities, and each time he's done it up the levels, he doesn't try and pinch it. He doesn't work out tactics that will get him through that fight. He goes out and he takes it by the scruff of the neck. Look look at what he's done in his title fights. He's putting them out very quickly. Baluta, he knew he had to outbox him. Straight from the opening bell, seized the fight, didn't lose a second of a fight. Lafamina, he went hunting for him in that European title fight and got dragged into something he shouldn't. And then last night, he went again. Doesn't Liam tries to grasp his opportunities? And I think that's a sign of a good fighter. You know, obviously, he's got the king of the world in his division, hasn't he? And that's a, a tall task for anybody. But if he knew he wasn't there, I think you could be looking at the best super bantamweight in the world. Big call. Cool, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and, and I think the timing for him could be pretty good because. I don't see any reason now why you wouldn't kind of, I don't think it'd be the wrong thing to do to to look to bed in anyway. And by the time you've had one or two more, in a way may well be gone. You know, he's got his fight with Lewis Neri. That's kind of some some national honour business that they're taking care of there. You know, they have been banned from Japan as far as I know, Lewis Neri, yeah. and they've revoked that so that he can come in so in a way can bash him up. That's, that's yeah. basically what's happening. <laughs> Um, and if he gets that done, then he might move up to featherweight, might he? Because wh wh why not? You know, I, I wouldn't see him, like to see him go above that. But but I think featherweight, yeah, well, he, he, he's going to, isn't he? He's been undisputed in two different weight divisions. And then all those belts have become vacant. And yeah, I mean, you know, he'd have a massive shout, Liam, wouldn't he, to become a world champion? If Liam does go over to Japan, though, don't expect him to put his gloves up and move around. He'll go no. out there to try and knock him out. He, he will. Yeah. No, he's a confident guy, believes in himself, and the evidence backs up that he can do it. So if if you get um, whatever happens with him, but if he does end up with a fight with Inoue, he'll go and try and win. No doubt about that. Fellas, if he gets a fight sorry. for a vacant title, Frank will get it at home in Telford for Telford's him. Telford's international centre, yeah. Fellas, thanks very much. Andy, thank you for affording us some time. John wants to speak. Go on, John. Yeah, if John if puts his Andy, finger up like a cricket left. umpire. We've got two minutes left. Let Andy give his uh, book a plug. Oh, far Ooh. away, Andy. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I know. <laughs> Amazingly, I'd forgotten. Um, yeah, so I writ I've written a book about the knockout, basically, in boxing. And it's it's kind of all aspects of it. So why it's this huge moment in sport, um, why it's something that we have in boxing that other, other sports don't have. What does it feel like to knock somebody out? What does it feel like to get knocked out in that moment and in the aftermath? How do you get over it? What's it like for referees and trainers who are really close to it and whose job it is sometimes to let it happen and sometimes to try and make sure that it doesn't happen? What What's it like for people watching? Um, should such a spectacle have any place in modern society? Yes, is the answer I come to. Um, but but it's, it's all of that. And I don't think anyone's really done it in that kind of depth. Um, and I got just great contributions from the likes of Frotch, Hay, Bellew, um, Amir, David Hay, Macklin, Jamie Moore, a couple of couple of active fighters in Anthony Yard and Fabio Wardley, um, Johnny Nelson, like lo loads of people, and and everybody was really keen to chat on a subject that at times I thought they might not be wild about, like asking Amir what was it like to get flattened by Bradis Prescott. Um, you know, you think you, you you're kind of treading on eggshells a bit, but he was he was bang up for it. So it's out at the end of at the end of May. Um, and a lot of it's about mentality, really. Like, how do they, how do they roll the dice like that? Because you know, if you're going to look to knock somebody out, then by definition, you you hold your feet a split second longer. It gives your opponent the opportunity to to chin you. So, yeah, it, it was loads and loads and loads of fun. Um, so if that's of any interest at all, you can pre-order it on Amazon now. The Knockout by Andy Clark. Well oh. remembered, John. I rarely miss an opportunity to to, <laughs> to to bang the drum, but I'd forgotten today. Fellas, thanks very much. 
to you both, especially you, Andy, and always to you, John. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next week. Last one before we have a little break for Easter. Thanks very much to everybody, and especially our guest, Andy and John. For all boxing, info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.